Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are around this beautiful planet of ours. Today, we're looking at capitulation across Bitcoin and the stock market. Following up on our macro series here on the channel, make sure you are subscribed with the bell notification icon. This is the important time in the market to not go anywhere as the biggest money is made at these times. So let's dive into the particular areas that most investors get wrong, how it happens, how you can avoid it, and what we can look out for to give us a signal that we're on the right track. We're starting with the capitulation within Bitcoin and then looking at this across the S&P as well over the entire bull market of the last 13 or so years. It happens every single time within these markets, every time we get this massive signal of capitulation. So what does it look like and how we can look out for it? We've also got many other fundamental pieces that come together at these exact times. And the layering of these fundamental and market sentiment announcements also help us put this puzzle together. Investing and trading isn't overly difficult. It's just a lot of different pieces being put together at the same time, as we'll see in today's video. So what we're looking at is, of course, the capitulation. Um, I've got these highlighted here on the Bitcoin chart at the exact times of particular bottoms within the cycle. And now we can see even just the most recent one, if we exclude November of last month, we can see how these markets have moved away from that point. But before we get into that, what exactly is the capitulation? What are we looking for here? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? What does it look like objectively on, on the chart? If we take a look at just the most recent times, we're going to a macro picture for BTC. And the main thing that we see is, of course, absolute mayhem and hysteria when the market starts to break down from key resistance levels. And what we saw in the past, if we take the most recent examples of November, we can see the market broke down from the key structure of June. We take the June bar, which was also a capitulation bar. You can, we can see that it broke down from the lows of May and June of 2021. Basically, the bull market uh, correction before the market took off into that final top. We go back into May, uh, March of 2020, the similar sort of thing happened. You can see the market broke down from key structure with a very deep wick and then a pretty swift reversal. Again, from November 2018, which was the previous bear market, very, which was at the time, strong structure for around $6,000. November happened, capitulation broke key support levels in the market. Again, we're looking at it on a macro time frame here, looking at the monthly chart, not going down to the weeklies or the dailies at this stage, keeping it much, much higher higher level than that to give us much more key signals, so big time frame stuff. We have five different examples just in recent history of the last four years in BTC, but we can even take this a step further, go back to the previous bear market as well, going back to 2014-15. You can see we had a breakdown here of key structure in the previous bear market. There was a low of around $275 to $300 there that bar came in, then it also broke down the accumulation area one last time before the bull market took off from that point. We can go back again, going to 2011. You can see that we had a breakdown of key levels here. The market stopped in April of 2011, came back and tested it, and then took off from that point. So we've got a bit of a capitulation here, and then the market rounding out to find a base and then take off from that point. This isn't just exclusive to BTC. It also happens in the stock market. And another key thing that we see within these particular capitulation signals to give us an idea of what to expect next if we are to see that bottom form and the market move away from it is something like a support level being tested on the capitulation. So we can go all the way back to 2010. I mean, we could take this back 100, 150 years, whatever data that we have, and the similar sort of things, things happen in the market based on human emotion. And it, it always happens because humans are in the markets and we have new generations that come through into the markets, like we saw with cryptocurrency, 20 and 30 year olds never been in a market before. It's basically getting behind the seat of a fast car, not knowing how to drive the thing, taking off thinking that you are a gun. And then of course, accidents happen. And that's exactly what happens 
almost every single time in these markets. And especially with the new markets like Bitcoin and crypto, about four years apart, we get these booms and busts because a lot of people get wrecked. They might crash their car, uh, figuratively speaking, in these markets and then not have enough money to come back and buy a new car for the next season. And that's what we want to avoid with our investing. Whereas in the traditional markets, these things can take a little bit longer to play out between uh, cycles, as you'll see in this particular example. But nonetheless, they do happen to uh, occur quite often as well as you start to get a, a flush of new people into the market every part of the cycle. And so what we're looking for next with this capitulation signal is a dump and then a test of previous support and resistance zones. So we're looking specifically here at the bear market capitulation, the dump here from the highs. You can see that it happened again in 2011. This time was around August 2011. The bar came out and tested the tops of the monthly accumulation back in 2010, found support, tried to test that level again, was unable to until October happened, quick test, and then a huge bounce away. Now that leads me into another key characteristic of these capitulations and what we want to see next. These capitulations can happen in a couple of different ways. So we'll go through a couple of these scenarios so we know what to look out for. And almost in every case, we do get a tradable range to the upside. What we can see here back in 2010 and 2011 is a similar sort of capitulation where you have the bar that crashes, then you get the next month hold out, trying to test those lower prices, not getting that much further down, and the following month starts to bounce away from that price. Same sort of thing happened in 2011. Big crash, following month trying to follow up on that negative sentiment, trying to push the market further down. The month after that, tests it just slightly and then bounces away quite quickly. And of course, we're looking here at about 11% from that move. But in, in the traditional markets, this is quite a big move. So keep that in mind as well. Now, the psychology around this and the pain that happens in the market is that what generally happens at these lows is that you get the dumb money, potentially a lot of retail, selling their positions at these low prices hoping to buy back at lower prices again. They've had many opportunities to sell on the way down all these months here, hoping to sell out, but they always do it all together at the same time at the bottom of the capitulation. And that's what causes the capitulation. So on that capitulation month, we've got a high close on some cases. The following month has tried to test those lower prices. And you can see a lot of investors waiting for a better op entry opportunity to buy lower. That's essentially why people do that. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever, ever had this train of thought. I know I definitely have when I first started out. I thought if I just sell now, I can buy back lower when the market keeps going. But these thoughts usually happen around the bottoms when the most extreme panic is all coming together in the market at the same time. So you get this one extra month thinking, maybe here's my chance to buy at, buy at lower prices. It doesn't come. The next month might only give you a brief period of lower prices or it might be slightly higher. Either way, it's generally not enough to get most of those retail buyers in at much lower prices, something that they believe is more worthwhile for the pain that they've had to endure for that period of time. And then you get the smart money buying up and bouncing this market well and truly away from any of those prices that they sold at. This is where the pain really, really kicks in and they start to buy up at higher prices just in case they are never able to see those lower prices again. This is what it looks like on the Wall Street cheat sheet. I'm sure many of you have seen this before, and this is exactly how it happens with the emotions. We've gone through the euphoria and the complacency stage. As the market begins to drop, you're anxious, denial, panic, and then eventually the capitulation sets in. Now, in some cases, the capitulation can be right at the low, like we saw on the, the charts. Other, other times, it can be a slightly higher low that we fall into for the anger and potentially that depression stage of the market. Either way, it's usually not enough for the people who sold out at the capitulation to buy back in. And that's where you get that anger and depression as the market grinds away at those lower prices. They're still waiting for much lower prices. Exactly what we hear about with BTC. We had a 17, 17 and a low, we had a 15 and a half K low, but everyone is waiting for a 10 K an eight K a six K they'll come up with whatever reason why it needs to go that much lower and wait for that particular price. 
and they forget to look at what the signals in the market is actually showing them when it comes to volume, closing prices, and macro swings within a market. We can see the same pattern play out year in, year out. We've got 2015 capitulation, comes back, tests some previous old all-time high prices and key resistance levels. Although it doesn't look like much on the chart, this was a key level back at the time as we pushed to new all-time highs, had a quick dump the following month into January, had that Christmas rally dump, a little break down further in February, and then a bounce back above. So this was about three months of prices heading up, then getting rejected, and then trying to push back to new all-time highs. Three months in a market does feel like a long time, even though it looks like such an insignificant piece of the puzzle on the chart. So that's capitulation number one. The same sort of scenario happened here. You had a higher close. The following month tried to break lower, doesn't get there and then bounces away, causing a lot of pain to investors who at this period were waiting for much lower prices. It didn't come, potentially buying back in as the market races up, only to see the capitulation happen yet again with higher closes and then the market race away without them from that point. So we're seeing a very similar pattern here where we've got one month crash, the next month grinding a little lower before we see a spring away, a crash, a grind lower, and then a bounce away. Moving forward to more recent times, we have it in 2018, basically a crash, a bounce or higher, and then the market bounces away to new all-time highs before we get, in this case, the pandemic crash, huge capitulation, really, really high close. And we can see from the following month that this was going to be a V-shaped recovery. It was something that I was talking about a lot at that point in time in 2020, looking specifically for a V-shaped recovery because of these particular bars in the market. If you remember back to that period, if you were in the market, a lot of people were expecting this to be the be all and end all of the market itself, basically going into that multi-year bear market. So where does this leave us for the S&P, the traditional markets, the showstopper for the entire financial system, and of course, our beloved Bitcoin. What do these signals mean? Just before we get to that, quick reminder that our free macroeconomic investor and cryptocurrency report is coming out this week in about 24 hours time. This will be delivered to your emails. This free report comes out once every two weeks and it's part of our investor accelerator free education. So check out the link in the video description down below or in the pinned comments. Let's get back to where we currently sit in this market and what does this mean for Bitcoin right now? Well, right now in the market, we've seen quite a lot of time down. We've covered this on the channel many, many times before in terms of the timing of the cycle and where we see these signals come up, especially in relation to the S&P along with Bitcoin. Are we seeing a bottom? Well, if we go back and have a look at these particular signals, we can see in the last few uh, instances, we've had the capitulation, a little bit of a close up on some of these and then a retest the following month before the market is able to grind sideways and then pump, leaving most for dead. The pain comes into the market during that period when it breaks out of these accumulation periods. And I mean pain because in terms of a percentage from that low to the top, these markets in, in some cases have done 300%. In other cases, you know, we can go from the, the low in 2020 to that peak in uh, April of 2021, 1500%. It gave us a little bit of a pause here at 168% and then again at 221%. And so it's only natural to feel the FOMO once these moves actually happen. And that's what the meaning of the capitulation is. The retail is out, the dumb money is out. They're waiting for lower prices only to never see those lower prices come and the market basically pushes on without them from that point. Now, there's a really important pattern that could happen from this point that sucks a lot of people in and then gives us another opportunity. It's part of the cycle that we are waiting for within quarter one, and I'll get to that in just a second. But just to do a summary of what these capitulation bars do, how they occur, what I think is coming next, what to look out for, let's take a look at this here. So I've got a couple of scenarios written down for us. The first, similar price action, possibly lower low, but close within previous candle price range. So this is all going to help us uh, for the month of December if we don't see December pushing up higher for BTC. Of course, with the S&P, we already saw a, low, uh, we saw a low in October. We saw a bounce, a pretty strong bounce out for November. So we're looking for a top in December 
or January. So January, that's January 2023. This is what we've been covering here for months since that low in October as well, waiting for that move up to see where that top comes in to give us an indication of where that low will come in. Will it be a lower low or will it be a higher low? And so what we're seeing from Bitcoin so far is that in each of these cases, even if it is only a small bounce from that point, we still get a bounce from those months, whether it's the following month of the capitulation or the month after that point. And this is one of the weakest ones that we saw, which was June into July and August. But if you remember just that four months ago, that was probably one of the most bullish times in the market that we had seen for quite some time. Everyone was saying that this was the low, we had seen the exact low, and that they were about to miss out on the next altcoin pump, the next altcoin season. Of course, we were looking at this as potentially being a low, but we still did not have confirmation of that. So it was a very significant low. We know from history that emotionally, and unfortunately financially for a lot of people, that it was a significant low as they got caught out trying to buy cryptos on these bounces, hoping for another altcoin season like they remember from the last 12 months only to see the market fall and then crash under those levels to wipe out some of the final hopes and dreams. Now the second scenario is a strong bounce in the following month following the capitulation, but only if the capitulation close was high. I'd say above about 50 to 60% of the bar. This is a perfect example of that. This was the COVID dump, the pandemic dump, and you can see that the close was above the halfway point of that particular candle. The next month pushed even harder and then we never saw that price range again. This time, however, we have not had a very strong close. So I dare say in terms of the probabilities, we may see something like this where it's a weak bounce, not a strong bounce like what we saw last time, or we get something similar to what happened in 2018 where we had a low close the December rolled over again, but it wasn't that much lower. So the people looking for capitulation here at uh, the, the lower prices of Bitcoin, which is around three and a half, they were waiting for twos and $1,000, never get there. Then we see the market go sideways, take a few months to breathe and then recover and push away without them. So that's what we're looking for now because we didn't see a high close in November. How this can get invalidated is if we get this close in December, that gets back above the previous capitulation zone of June. The information in these videos is the sort of stuff that we arm all of our members with so that they are around for the next bull market. Check out the links in the video description if you want to get a taster of how we do this, how we're able to time the markets and prepare for that upcoming bull market. And of course, stay safe in the market in case we are wrong. There is always the case that we can be wrong. But for the case of Bitcoin, we have multiple examples here of the capitulation just grinding out for one to two months, potentially even a few more like we saw in the previous bull market. We can go back to the bull market of 2021. We had the following month, which was a grind out before a pump. We also had the grind out here in 2018 into 2019. We had the grind out in 2015 with multiple months sideways before that final capitulation and the pump up. So we had two different scenarios of capitulation playing out within the accumulation period of 2015. And then finally here, we've got the 2011 capitulation market dropped, had another month just to test those prices before it bounced out, reaccumulated bounce out again, reaccumulate, and then pumping onto that bull market. Within each of these cases, the cry from most people were that the market had to go lower. Just like the same deal we saw at the top of the market, it has to go to 100,000. Right now, we're seeing a lot of people say it has to go to 10,000 or lower. From the last cycle, I remember very clearly there were a lot of people on YouTube as well saying that the market had to go under $1,000. It was only natural that it had to push underneath that price. And for the price cycle, I dare say there were a lot of people looking for prices under $100. And you can just keep going back to each of these different key support levels, key psychological levels where the market would have said, this has to go back under 10 or I'm not buying until it goes under X amount of dollars. This is what leads to that next stage of the pump where they miss out, time runs out, and then the pump comes and those targets start to move a little higher. But unfortunately, it always happens to be the price that they're asking for is going to be lower than what the market offers them. And this is how the bull markets begin from that point. That's a look at capitulation bars on a chart and what follows next, what we can look out for and how we can best prepare for them. Question to you guys in the comments, 
do you think we're in capitulation or do you think we're completely off topic here? Do you think we've gone past that and we are ready to go further and further down? Let me know your thoughts in the comments while you hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you back here at the very next video looking at the macro picture for the stock market, real estate, and of course, cryptocurrencies. Until then, peace out.